the rest of the morning. Not even five minutes lapse and he hears somebody knocking on the boat. The snake is back with two frogs in its mouth. Oh. <laughs> Got it? You know, the moral of the story is that the snake is saying, I like your scotch whiskey. Give me more of it. I'll bring you more frogs. Right. So the right. bad behavior was rewarded. Exactly. Exactly. So, so what happens is that the, the, the behavior that you did not want to promote was rewarded and you get, and you get more of it. Right? right. So in organizations, it's very important to figure out what are the results you want, what are the behaviors that would pr produce those results and reward those behaviors and not the other behaviors. I'm just reminded of uh, what we do at the PIM. You know, we start our, our MBA sessions at 5.30 in the evening and uh, we tell the students, you know, our student managers, the senior people, you've got to be there, uh, you know, before 5.40. You, know, you can come in 5.30 to 5.40 and after that, you know, don't disturb the class, you come after the break. Now, I found that some of our lecturers um, recap and repeat, right, uh, what is what they have already said for the benefit of the latecomers. And then they are encouraging Yeah, that so I told them to don't do that. Now say the most important thing at the outset. In other words, punish the behaviors that you do not want to promote, right, as opposed to uh, rewarding, rewarding them. them. Right? So, yes, so on that note, Doctor, we will continue yes, after yes. a short break. National event to recognize the efforts and performance of sales personnel in Sri Lanka, NASCO 2010. National Sales Congress being organized by Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing for the 11th consecutive year at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, 26th March 2010 at Main Ballroom, Hotel Galadari. Media sponsor, ITN and Prime TV. Living their lives in a brand new town, doing the best they can. Welcome back. You're watching Roundtable and we are speaking to Dr. Udita Lianage, Director of the Postgraduate Institute of Management of the Sri uh, Jayavadanapura University. And also we were speaking about principles of management. Number one, you see what you get and also you get what you focus. Number three, you get what you believe. And number four, you get what you reward. And on that note, Doctor, I just wanted to ask you, you were talking about rewarding um, good performance. So how do you organizations actually cope up with bad performance and people and employees who are not performing to the expectations of the organization? That's a very important question. We're talking about uh, positives. Now we're talking about the negative aspect of it. You know, what happens when people fall short? You want them to perform at a particular level and they don't measure up. You know, they fail. Now what do you do? Uh, this is a loaded question, but uh, perhaps an oversimplification. I think you've got to ask a fundamental question here. When people fail, ask the question, is it a matter of can't do or won't do? Right? Is it a question of can't do or won't do? And I think making a clear distinction between these two is very important. If it is a question of can't do, you know, and you fail because you can't do, then it's a problem of knowledge and or skill. You can't do. You don't have the requisite knowledge. You don't have the requisite skills to perform that particular task and achieve a given result. So you can't do, right? So you've got to provide the necessary training and the coaching perhaps and ensure that uh, once uh, skills are sharpened and you provide the necessary knowledge to perform that given task. However, on the other hand, if it's a question of won't do, you know, the guy knows uh, what to do, but he won't do. 
Now here, the, the problem is very different, you know, to the first one. Here the problem is one of motivation, you know. The person doesn't have the passion and the energy and the energy, I think that's the right word, to, to, to do, perform the task. So again, in organization, sometimes we get these two mixed up, you know. We find a person who won't do because uh, of lack of motivation and commitment, right, for a variety of reasons. And then we send this guy to some training program. So won't do, you are saying that there's a clear link to lack of motivation and lack of energy and commitment to the and commitment, you know. Uh, there's no wanting in terms of the knowledge and the skills. The person, you know, can do if he wants to or she wants to. But simply a matter of commitment. You know, there are other priorities or, you know, question asking why, why should I bother? Why should I do this? You know, what is the reward that I get? And what is in it for me? And therefore, you, you just uh, become sluggish and you don't actually do it. So it's a question of won't do, right? Now, if you don't, as I said, make the separation, then I don't think you're, you're doing the right thing. So the first step is to clearly uh, diagnose, right, the problem. Uh, now, if it's a question of motivation, then again, uh, you might have a problem. I think the bigger problem is a lack of motivation rather than lack of knowledge or skills, right? Uh, you, you will have to dig deep and figure out why is it that this person is not motivated. Perhaps uh, the person is committed to the organization, but not committed to the task at hand. You know, the person says, well, this is something I wouldn't like to do, you know. Uh, I'm committed to the organization. I, I kind of uh, uh, see the merit of, uh, you know, what we are doing in organizational sense. But uh, the problem may lie in the relationship between the particular employee and his or her boss, for instance. So again, you've got to figure out uh, what is holding this person back, right? Why is the person demotivated? So, so that is a way to deal with bad performance, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how can you actually now, we know actually when we are working with employees, this is sort of the same question I'm asking, yes. but you also work with different people and yeah. some people in the organizations can be friends who, you, uh, your friends at one point of your life, yeah. but when they come into the organization, the relationship changes, they become colleagues. Yeah. So for example, when such people also don't perform, yeah. then how do you deal with a situation like yeah. that? I mean, how can you... Yeah, that, that's, that's a tough one because you're, you're bringing in a relationship that you have outside the organization. I mean, you know the other person, you know, well, the other, and then the, you, you're working with your friend in the organization, right? And the person is underperforming. You know, how, do you, how do you handle the situation? Now, that, that's more difficult. But I think what one needs to do is to say, well, uh, we know each other uh, in a different context, and now we are part of the organization, right? So it's not about me and you, it's about the organization, and we are members of the organization, and unless we identify ourselves with the organization and the organization's goals and objectives, we are going to fail. So what you need to do is to take the discussion, take the dialogue to a high level, to a different level, to a different context and say it's not about both of us, right? We know each other, we've know, been knowing each other over the years, but now it's about the organization, it's about the organizational context. And, and change the context, you know, from a personal relationship to an organizational relationship, an so organizational context. I think that's the first thing you've got to do, shift the focus, shift the context. So what you're going to say is organization, always put the organizational goals first by shifting the context. Yeah, the fact that, you know, you and I know each other is one matter, but here you're talking about another matter altogether. It's about organization, and we are part of the organization. You know, our roles are very different. You're not friends, you're friends all right, but, but in the organization, it's the organizational context that matters. And also to, to extend my argument, and having established this relationship in organizational context, I think uh, setting standards is very important, whether you know the other person intimately or not. The whole question of uh, measuring performance, measuring standards, uh, sorry, setting standards, I think is extremely important. In fact, if you like, this could be the fifth great management principle. You get what you measure. Get what you measure. Right. Okay. If if you don't measure performance, you don't get the desired results. And in organizations, we talk about key performance indicators. Right. If you want somebody to perform, make it absolutely clear to that person that this is my expectation in terms of the desired level of performance. And don't keep it vague. Don't keep it abstract. Quantify as far as possible. Measure it as far as possible. Make it time bound. Right. Smart goals, as we call them. And if you can clearly spell out your expectations, and this is the performance standard, 